Hello, and welcome to this episode of the Bible Toolbox. I'm Lydia. And I'm Luke, and we're here to help you enjoy the Bible through the tools that scholars and programmers have created for you. And we have a special guest here, Dr. Bill Mounts, who, um, man, hardly needs introduction. Uh, <laughs> most most pastors probably have used his Greek grammar, and um, he's been on multiple Bible translation committees and uh, is over the biblicaltraining.org, which is what we're going to talk about today. So welcome, Bill. Thanks for being here. I'm glad to be here. Thanks. Yeah. So why don't we just start just, who are you and how did you just tell the story of how you got to where you were and what are you doing now? Well, um, how far back do you want me to go? <laughs> I was raised in a Christian family and an academic family a long history of teachers and pastors, and uh, went to Western Kentucky University, fell in love with New Testament, with Greek, and then I did a degree at Fuller and a PhD from Aberdeen, taught for a while, but I really wasn't built for the classroom. I like to teach, but I don't like the repetitive nature of the teaching, so I left for a while just to get a break. I was exhausted. I thought maybe I'd do better at graduate school, so I went to Gordon-Conwell, and it just wasn't my cup of tea. And it's kind of odd to enjoy teaching, but not in a traditional setting at all. Mm -hmm. So I left Gordon Conwell and started a church in Spokane and that, that went for a while and mostly a good experience. And then we just really felt I needed to throw myself into biblical training. And so we, uh, my, my wife who's not nearly as adventuresome as I am just came to me one day and said, I've been offered a job at a software company and, she said, Bill, your goal in life is not to make rich men richer. Uh, I wouldn't take the job. I said, well, okay, what do you want me to do? I said, just give yourself to BT. And that's when everything really took off is when I, I made that commitment. So uh, that was uh, 14, 15, 16, 17 years ago. Oh, wow. uh, biblical training was established as a 501c3 December of 2000. So it's been around for 23 years. So we just recently decided we live we have a cabin up in the northeast corner of Washington State on the most gorgeous river in the world. Mm. And we Robin finally said, Why don't we just move there? I says, You want to live in the middle of nowhere? She said, Yeah. <laughs> she loves she said, we I've always enjoyed looking at creation. Now I live in creation. Mm -hmm. So we feed the deer every morning and all that kind of stuff. So we live up here and it's uh we got through one winter, which was a little hard. <laughs> Pipes were frozen. I wasn't ready for it. But so we live up here and Robin's working on a book uh, for pastor's wives and I'm doing my stuff up here. So uh, the big news up here is we get fiber optic coming in in two weeks. They finally attached to the back of my office. And uh, so anyway, so that's what I do. I spend most of my time on biblical training, doing some social media stuff and working on second edition of my textbooks. Okay. When, when did you... In, in that time period, when did you write your uh, first edition of your textbook? Your Greek? You know, I don't, I don't know the date for it. 93, I think. Somewhere around there. It's been around for a while. Yeah, it has. It's, it's uh, done well. We uh, came out with a fourth edition. I don't know what else to do to fix it. Uh, <laughs> if it needs to be fixing, we've sent out polls and teachers have told me to leave it alone, alone mm -hmm. so I will. And, you know, it, a while back, I just decided I've written enough books. Uh, I know some people just want to keep writing and writing, and I don't. Um, I just want to make sure what I've written is as good as I can write it. Mm -hmm. So I'm doing second or third editions of the other books. And I got a book for new believers that I finished that Jonathan doesn't like, so I got to figure out what to do with it. But <laughs> uh, it's almost it just so, yeah, just getting the books finalized. Mm -hmm. So, okay. so what is biblicaltraining.org? Biblical training uh, is trying to meet the need of, it's, it's, kind of, it's a little negative to say it this way, but it's biblical illiteracy in the church. Um, it is just amazing what people don't know. And our special focus is, is training the leaders. And that's leaders from, you know, small group leaders to uh, people on worship teams, all the way up to uh, pastors and whatnot. And so it's, you know, when I was at Gordon Conwell, uh, and it wasn't just Gordon Conwell, the average student graduated with $60,000 in debt, which would mean as long as they're pastors, they're never going to get out of debt. 
<laughs> and so that that was an issue for me and i said you know what there but my main the main issue for me was untrained leaders uh, elders specifically it was just amazing to me how we had leaders in the church who didn't match first timothy 3 they they didn't have the character qualifications uh, they certainly weren't able to teach the bible uh, they didn't have well-managed homes, you know, all the requirements that you have in 1 Timothy 3. And so BT started as a desire to provide the educational uh, materials necessary to train the lay leaders in the church. And of course, you don't have to be an elder to use the class, but that's that's where it came from. Okay. So we had, I think we're at, oh, I don't know. I should know these numbers. We have about 150 classes and seminars we have 2,300 hours of instruction. Wow. We have teachers from 18 different seminaries. Uh, our goal is to be broadly evangelical. And so I didn't certainly didn't want it to be the Bill Mount site, mm -hmm. uh, but I certainly didn't mm -hmm. want it to be just the reform site or the Wesleyan site. I, I really wanted it broad evangelical. So mm -hmm. we've had pick teachers from a lot of different schools. So is it like compatible to seminary? Like does a minister just not need to go to seminary and just do your courses? Is that, is that the idea or is it more of a fill-in for seminary plus? Um, it, it sounds a little harsh, but um, seminaries are failing. Uh, you can watch that those that used to be here that aren't here anymore. Uh, they are and more and more are disappearing. The statistic that's really bothersome is that out of seminary trained pastors, only one is still in the pulpit ministry after 10 years. Really? We have a 90% attrition rate. So there, there's a serious issue in seminaries. And seminary presidents don't like to hear that. I mean, that's a real number. Mm -hmm. And so I think more and more, especially large churches, are developing their own internship programs. And we want to be able to fill in with that. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe their teacher wants to teach preaching, but he doesn't want to teach church history. Well, he can use our church history classes. So, but we have three programs and these are basically three different levels. The academy is lay level. I don't like the word lay, but that's the only word in the English language for it. It's just basic for people in the church. The institute is university level, which is more for elders. And then the institute is graduate level. And those are all seminary classes. So we have three, and that's part of the problem. We have so much material that people can get kind of lost on the site, mm -hmm. but it's, it's, those are the three different levels. And so we always encourage people to start with foundations. It's, um, even if you've been in church for a long time, you know, this, and you know, that there's going to be holes in what, you know, mm -hmm. and the foundations curriculum will kind of is a comprehensive education that will kind of fill in all those gaps. And the first class is called uh, life is a journey. And it was designed for new believers. And actually, it started as a sermon series I preached. And I announced to the church that um, I was um, going to treat them like they were brand new believers. They didn't know anything. And so I did a 12-part series. And that became the class. And a student, student uh, one of the parishioners came to me after the series was over and said, I got to tell you, when you announced this series, I thought, oh, great, I'm going to be bored out of my mind. And he goes, I didn't know half of what you talked about. Mm. I thought, well, yeah, I know the church you grew up in, and I, I, that doesn't surprise me. Okay. Nice, nice pastor, but not a biblical preacher. So everybody can, everybody can start in foundations. They're going to be learning things, and then they can get deeper and deeper as far as they want to go. So it's foundations is the lay level, and then the academy, and then the institute? Right. Yeah. Okay. Nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is your... um. 52 week through the Bible. Is that in foundations? I listened to that one. That's in foundations. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah. It's a lot of people like that class is really fun. Yeah. The basically there's two ways to do your survey. You can do a traditional old Testament, new Testament survey, or you can do the 52 stories, which is about 26 hours. So it's mm -hmm. about the same amount of times the two classes and you, you still get all the basic things you get in a survey class, but it's all in story form. Right. And I think that's why people like that class, because most people like story. Mm -hmm. Jesus likes story. Um, so yeah. uh, people kind of gravitate towards that. Mm -hmm. For sure. yeah. my, my survey in the, in the course that I liked was Greg Beal's Biblical Theology. So <laughs> <laughs> Isn't Beal an amazing person? <laughs> he, was, he was the guy that got me to come to Gordon-Conwell. Okay. And I didn't 
I didn't want to go. I was really happy what I was doing. And he mm -hmm. nagged me and nagged me and nagged me and finally said, you know, maybe the Lord is speaking to him the way he's not speaking. <laughs> Greg's, a, Greg's a, a really good guy. And he's a phenomenal theologian. My mm -hmm. goodness. Yeah. So, yeah. The one that got me was uh, John Coe's spiritual formation. Oh, that, like, uh, that, that radically changed my life. Yeah. You know, um, that actually was a series he gave in the church. I think it was Woody area in Southern Cal. And uh, we've not been able to get him to redo it on video. Okay. But I think it's the most impactful class we have on the website. We get really? so many comments because it's about the, the uh, dark night of the soul. Mm -hmm. And we all go through these things and mm -hmm. you know, become Christians and we're excited and things are moving forward. And we go, you know, yeah, I'm glad I made this decision. And then prayers don't get answered and bad things happen and children die. And mm -hmm. I just say, cause we lost two children. So it's, you know, bad things happen and you fall into this funk and what do you do? I mean, Piper wrote a book, uh, how to fight for your faith. So it's the same kind of thing, but mm -hmm. yeah, that's a, John really did a good job on that class. Mm -hmm. We're thankful for it. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. That's one I recommend very frequently. <laughs> oh, good. Good. I'll let them know. Okay. I'll see you. <laughs> Number one fan over here. Well, probably not. All right. Okay. Good. <laughs> good. Yeah. Yeah. So can you talk through what is, what is the importance of biblical education? Um, but what, why is your website so important? Um, can't they just read the Bible on their own? Stated in very simply terms, you can't be like Jesus unless you know what he's like. And there is so much to him and his teaching. And, you know, the Great Commission, you know, people say they want to be a Great Commission church. They say, well, the Great Commission is you teach people to obey everything that I've taught. So you have to teach. You have to teach people. You have to teach everything. Mm -hmm. And you have to teach to obey. And the only way to teach people to obey is to model in community. So the Great Commission is not to preach John 3, 16 every day. It is to evangelize and to disciple. And it's supposed to be everything. Mm -hmm. um, so when Jesus, the disciples ask Jesus, why, um, why you speak in parables? And he quotes Isaiah and he says, well, I spoke, speak in parables so they can't understand me. Uh, the two different gospels have slightly different versions, but basically that's what Jesus is saying. I don't want them to understand me. Well, why, why would you do that, Jesus? Well, historically, Jesus had decided to punish the nation Israel, and they had to continue in their sin in order to be punished. Is that part of who Jesus is? Hmm. Um, and, you know, there's, so there's this full-orbed understanding that we need to have of Jesus and Paul and, and the entire Bible. And people, um, people don't know that. And until you really, and, and education is not the answer, but education, learning in community, processing the information, applying it, do one, uh, what, read one, what's the expression with, with doctors? Uh, see one, do one, teach one. Hmm. That's how you model Christ to people. And that means you have to know the Bible. You just have to, and so if if we're gonna if we're gonna have healthy churches, if we're gonna grow as individuals, uh, you can't do it in ignorance of the text. You you just can't. It just doesn't work. You know, I hear of preachers in Africa that have been preaching for years and don't have a Bible, mm -hmm. and I don't know how that happens. And I'm not I'm not saying that doesn't happen, but I think how much better to actually be able to read. The stories of Jesus and what he did and what he taught and the kind of st strength of spiritual character that would bring. That's what we're trying to do in biblical training. That's a, a longer answer that I meant to give. But um, we, we want to move the highest quality education possible into the church so that everyone has access to it. And that means it has to be free because as soon as we put a price tag on it, uh, we cannot reach everybody. So how did you decide which courses to put and are you still developing courses or what's, what's kind of oh, yeah. like, what's the five-year biblical training plan? Grow, grow, grow. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, we just did a class on, on Exodus um, 
Block did Old Testament survey. We have quite a few Old Testament surveys. Um, John Oswald, who did Isaiah for us at Asbury, is going to be here on Monday to do First and Second Kings. So we certainly want to get um, classes on every book of the Bible. We have them on every discipline, I think. We're a little light on spiritual formation. Uh, uh, but uh, and John Johnson's doing another pastoral class in three weeks, so uh, the, the pastoral side of things is covered. So we want to we want to grow until we've got a class on every book of the Bible, every discipline of the Bible. Certainly, some will have to be updated at that point. Ron mm -hmm. Nash did a really good apologetics class, but it was nineteen. It was um, when nine eleven happened, oh, wow. and so all of his illustrations are very very old. Well, we're going down to uh, California in a month and a half, and Sean McDowell is going to do an apologetics class oh, wow. for us. That's wow. going to be a lot. Cool. Yeah. yeah. And so we have some classes to update. The other thing that we need to do is, I mean, what I did, I just went to my friends. And mm -hmm. I said, I mean, there was, it was like, okay, we need a gospel class. I just said, who do I have as a friend who would be willing to record the class and give it away for free? And I just... I just got everything I could, and I didn't really care what it was, as long as it was a premier professor uh, who spent his life in the discipline and really knew how to teach. Uh, we have so we have some exceptional teachers. John Oswald, for example, when he did Isaiah, I just stood there with my mouth hanging open most of the time. I've never heard a master lecturer before, hmm. and if I had heard John lecture when I was thirty. I would have fundamentally changed how I teach. He's that good really? of a lecturer. Wow. Oh, God, he's, he's just tell. absolutely. Listen to that first. Yeah, he knows how to. He knows how to pause. He's engaging. Uh, he's a gracious gentleman. He's eighty-three with the energy of a fifty-year-old. <laughs> um, so, so that that's what we'll we'll just keep doing that. But here's the problem. The rule has always been: I want to get the teachers that have that are the world's expert. So we got block on Deuteronomy. We're we're going to get block in Ezekiel in about a year. Uh, we got walking on Psalms and walking on Proverbs. You know, and these are I mean these people they've spent their whole life studying these mm -hmm. things. Mm -hmm. And but the the problem is, in order to be that good, you're probably seventy or older. Yeah, honestly, <laughs> the best want, guys are the older ones. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, we want, so Sean's by far the youngest guy. He's 47. He's by far the youngest person we have on the website. Wow. But we have a concern to get to people your age, frankly, mm -hmm. uh, people who are starting in ministry who need to be prepared, who, who can't go to TEDs like you are, um, but who they, they need to be trained. And so we're trying to deal with this whole issue of how do you find younger speakers that are really, really good. Mm -hmm. And the problem is that most of them are so busy establishing their career and writing books and speaking yeah. and blogging and podcast. I mean, I don't know how many of my students at Gordon Conwell have turned me down, which it's really hard to turn your professor down just <laughs> any, at an emotional level. I, I mean, if Howard Marshall asked me to do something, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I would do it. Um, so I, I know it's hard for them to say no to me. But, you know, they're, Jason Derushi has got six kids. I mean, he just can't pick up a, you know, a lecture. So we're, we're having to pick on Jason. Um, <laughs> he's a uh, anyway, um, good guy. But he's, uh, he's hard to get the younger guys. Uh, Patrick Schreiner. I mean, Tom Schreiner, his dad, is one of my best friends. And I couldn't get Patrick to do stuff. But, you know, he's so busy. And he's really good. So that's kind of the challenge we have, mm -hmm. uh, getting younger guys. But we'll keep working at it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, just talking about you you brought up the Isaiah course. Are there any other courses that are like top-notch, top of the list, go check these ones out? Um, or, like, what are your favorites? Oh, no, I, I, I can't answer no, that. He's I can't right answer now. that. <laughs> um, um, I mean, but we have, um, we have, there are, we don't have any bad classes, mm -hmm. uh, because I'm so careful when I pick the professors, um, Bruce Walkie on Psalms and Proverbs is unparalleled. Um, and if you just, there isn't anyone better than Bruce in those areas, uh, that Doug on Romans, Doug Moo on Romans, and he did Galatians for us as well. Uh, those are very, very good classes. 
Um, Mulholland's class on Revelation is really, really good. He's a professor at Asbury. And we're, we, uh, now that Schreiner came out with this Revelation commentary, we'll probably get Tom to do it as well. But here's, here's the kind of thing that happens. So we, we got Mulholland's commentary, Tim Tennant, who, I mean, his class, Tim Tennant, it's the president of Asbury, was my first board member, helped me get BT started. So he opened up the floodgates of Asbury and we got a lot of classes, Mulholland and Revelation. Well, in that particular lecture, he only got to Revelation 21, that class, he didn't get to 22. And I said, well, you, you, you've got to finish Revelation. It's really important. So we sent him uh, a recording unit and said, can you just do it on audio? He said, sure. So he did it. He was retired, but he did it. And then a few months after that, he passed away. Oh, wow. And one of my board members was talking to me, and he was listening to Mulholland's class. And he goes, I, I've never heard anyone lecture this well before. And I told him the story, and he just went ashen. I said, are you telling me that if we didn't have that class and chapter 22, it would have been lost forever? I went, yeah. Hmm. So he funds a thing called the Legacy Fund, where I can pick two professors a year who are retired and are the best of the best. And he pays for the class. Classes cost between twenty and 25000 So it's a, it's a real commitment financially. Um, but so that, that's another reason too, we tend to get senior scholars is that we have the money for that. Mm -hmm. Um, but anyway, uh, that's really good. Um, I mean, there's just, there's, there's a lot of good classes. Uh, we have some of Craig Keener's stuff, uh, that as long as you love background information, Craig's stuff is, is second to none. Um, uh, those, those are really good. So anyway, yeah, yeah. So can you like give us a little tour of this website? Like, how do we find all these oh, resources? Sure. And how do you navigate your site? Because there's sure, an app too. There's a website and an app. There, there is an app. Um, we just spent two years rebuilding the entire website, and it got released. It wasn't my decision. It got released too early, mm -hmm. and the app broke badly. Oh uh -huh. no. So don't go to the app yet. The beta just went into the Apple store today okay. and uh, it's much more functional. So if you have an earlier version of the app, make sure you get the delete the old one, uh, get the new one. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and we have another <laughs> Do it right now. beta. Coming. <laughs> <laughs> we have another, uh, another beta coming out in a couple of weeks, but okay. yeah, I don't the, the, the Apple store takes about six days for apps to get through it. So, but anyway, anyway, so this is our homepage, and uh, it's radically different from what it was before. Mm -hmm. But uh, here are, there, there's several ways you can do this. There's, there's a getting started link, and here's the discussion of the different programs, uh, our encouragement to take the core classes, which are always the first eight classes or so. If you click on programs, uh, you get a description of them, and then when you click on them, then you go to the actual excuse my painfully slow internet there no. and you have an about page you have the professors oh this is a really interesting one Bert Downs was the old president of Western Seminary in Portland and he basically did a walk through the Bible and people love that class it's just a, like a it's a four or five hour class you get a big picture of the Bible and then you click over on classes and you you get them and just keep nexting your way through. Uh, Gary Parrott was a good buddy of mine at Gordon Conwell, and his stuff on worship is exquisite. Okay. I don't think anyone should stand up and then worship team member without taking this class. And there's a three hour version and a twenty hour version. You know, you, you, to some people say, "Do you understand that worship is the cycle of revelation and response?" And they kind of look at you, and kind of what? <laughs> Worship isn't singing. It's it, it can be worship, but it's not necessarily reading the Bible. Isn't necessarily worship if you don't understand it. Um, but it's the cycle of hearing the the clear declaration of the character and activity of God, and then responding to it in some way. So, for example, when I was pastor, we moved the sermon earlier in the service so that we could sing songs after it as a way for the for the audience for the congregation to respond to mm -hmm. the revelation okay. of God. 
So it's that cycle. Cut a lot of flack for that because everyone knows you only have one song after a sermon. It's second hesitation is 316. (laughs) Um, But, you know, this class down here, Carl Carty, he's won a couple of Dove Awards. Uh, He's a worship pastor in uh, Nashville, and he has a training school for worship team members. Okay. And I, my dad was a concert pianist, so I, I grew up with music. But when I heard him play the guitar, I went, oh, that's, that's what a musician sounds like. <laughs> yeah, Carl is unbelievable. Anyway, there, this is the class, the website is full of people like that. There's Mark Cortez up in your neck of the woods at, at Wheaton. Mm-hmm. So anyway, you have, you have that. You can also just go into classes and just look through them all. Um, you can search for classes up here if you want. If you want some help finding subjects, you can, it says biblical languages. It's just my Greek stuff. We're getting Hebrew done as well, but you have to go by subjects. Um, we have a relationship with a school in Canada called Okanagan. And what we like about them is, well, they only use our material but they're fully accredited by the um, uh, Canadian educational system. But they think that you should be learning in community. So they want people taking our classes, meeting with their pastor for an hour and a half every week, processing what they've been learning. Hmm. Um, But what they can do is that they can offer degrees at a really reduced rate and they're fully accredited by the government. And where, one thing that just really came out uh, a couple of months ago is that in Kenya, they passed a rule that pastors have to have, certi- they have to be certified. So we put together a program with Okanagan as a series of classes. Uh, Okanagan takes care of them. They get scholarships. And now all these Kenyan pastors can be legal pastors. Wow, um, that's huge. In Kenya. Through Okanagan, yes. So it's a, it's a, it's a. If if, if you want credit, uh, oh, you know, a lot of there's a lot of organizations that work with different schools to get credit. We just work with Okanagan because they agree with how we should be educating people. Mm-hmm. Anyway, there's our professors and and blogs and stuff like that. So mm-hmm. that's that's the website. But sometimes it's fun just to click up here and just look for stuff and uh, yeah. No, that's definitely definitely what I do. Um, yeah. If I'm doing a topic, just search that yeah. topic, and it pops up yeah. classes and lectures, and you know, and then yeah. put those on a queue yeah. and just pound through them. Yeah, yeah. We have a, a eighteen thousand word wiki. Nice. Uh, that was, I talked an unnamed publisher because they don't want to be named into giving us about five books. Some of them were like multi-series books, and that's what made this wiki. And so there's, you click on Aaron, and there's there's all the stuff on Aaron. So uh, almost half the people that come into the website come in on, they they do a Google search, and they get a wiki hit. And uh, so I know a lot of people are coming in that way. And uh, we are a a 501c3. That's hence the donate button. And uh, we're completely crowdfunded. And so we we rely on donations to keep things going. So, but anyway, that's the site. So cool. Yeah. So, well, do you have any more questions? Mm-mm. All right. Anything else you want to share before we wrap it up? This is like so awesome. I just want everybody to know about oh, good. <laughs> this site. Uh, I, well, I used to be hesitant to tell the story, and my wife told me to get over it. And people often ask me, you know, what was your idea? How did you get BT started? And you kind of asked that, and I didn't fully answer it. <laughs> um, I was preaching. I was, I was five years in Spokane. Uh, I did the adult education for my church, and the pastor left, and I said, I'd preach while I was going to the church. So I want you to preach on the elder passage in First Timothy 5. And I thought, and I was working on the commentary on pastorals of the time, so... I still kind of thought it was a strange passage. Now I know why he did it, because um, he wanted someone to say to his elders what he couldn't say. Uh-huh. <laughs> so anyway, so I said, okay, so I was preaching on, on 1 Timothy 5, and right smack in the middle of the sentence, I heard a voice in my head. Never heard a voice in my head before. And it was crystal clear, word for word, 
None of your elders are qualified. What are you going to do about it? Oh. Well, I knew who it was. When the Lord speaks to you, there's no question who it is. You don't have to wonder. If you wonder, it probably isn't the Lord. And I know we went off and had a three-minute conversation. I don't remember anything about it. But I came back, finished my sentence, finished my sermon, sat down next to Rob, and I said, was that really strange when I froze for three minutes? That's why I know I, I was gone for three minutes. She goes, what are you talking about? I, said, I, I stopped talking for yeah. three minutes. She goes, no, you yeah. don't even take a breath when you preach, Bill. You need to slow down. Whoa. Hmm. Yeah. So Narnia time is real. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm, I'm not... I mean, I fully believe in the working of the spirit, but I'm, you know, I don't hear voices in my head and mm -hmm. I, I don't, that's not who I am. Um, that's why I started BT and it was, I love living here in Spokane. And um, it was about a month after that, the Beals started calling me to get me to come to run the language program at Gordon Conwell. And I went, well, maybe that's why the Lord interrupted my sermon because under normal situations, I wouldn't have left Gordon, I wouldn't have left Spokane. But maybe that's I'm supposed to leave. And I, I went, part of my job was to update their distance ed program. And I went thinking, hey, if I could get Gordon Conwell to give away their distance ed program, um, maybe that's kind of what one way at least to get started training mm -hmm. people in the church. And they weren't open to that. So that's when I, I just started recording it myself. So it wasn't my idea. It wasn't my great idea. It was the Lord's great idea. And knowing my personality is interesting, he didn't say do it. He said, well, he challenged me. What are you going to do about it, Bill? Because okay. he knows I, I like challenges. I respond <laughs> to challenges. So so that was the, that was the beginning of biblical training. Mm -hmm. And uh, it has been uh, quite a ride. It's um, for a while, it was the biggest source of marital conflict in my marriage because Robin didn't understand why I was always thinking about BT. And then she finally read uh, Andy Stanley's book on visioneering. And it talks about a vision that's knit to your soul. And she goes, oh, that's what my husband's doing. <laughs> they didn't have a choice. Uh, this is God knit this thing to his soul. And when she finally realized that, then she's all in. Mm. So uh, it's been a good ride. And no conflict anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So how do you envision biblicaltraining.org helping people enjoy the Bible? Um, is our goal. I think there's two ways to do it. One is um, if you want help on a specific book of the Bible and we have a class, take the class. Mm -hmm. um, if you want a, a broader kind of scope of education, uh, just there's just work through the core classes and the foundations. Uh, we have there's a church in Jackson, uh, Jacksonville, ten, Jackson, Jackson. I got too many Jacksons. It's in Tennessee, whatever. Jackson, Jacksonville. Anyway, um, and I got contacted by them, and uh, Charles, who became our chairman of our board, finally had found BT, and he has a great pastor. Eugene's a good pastor, and he. I'm getting to the answer, but I, you need to hear the story. It's a great story. Um, he's a really good pastor, but a half hour is just not enough, right? I mean, I, you have a really good half hour preaching. That's, that's not enough. And so what Charles wanted to do was to get something that was more academic, a little more solid than a lot of other things that are out there. And he was on a mission, his Debbie, his wife says, to create a notebook of that would take people on a three-year journey through core classes, seminary level classes. And it's about 350 pages. And then he got four of them together and they started working through the class. Mm. And they would listen to the lecture. This is, this is the most important thing. Don't spend your time together listening to the lectures. It's an absolute waste of time. <laughs> listen on your own. Listen when you're mowing, when you're baking, when you're when you're traveling, when you all the things that we do. That's when you listen to these classes, and when you get together, you process it. What did you learn? What did you think of that? Does was he right? Was he wrong? You know this kind of stuff. Well, that's what they were doing in their weekly small group. Well, word got out, and at the end of the first year, there were 54 people that wanted what those four people had. So those four people went out. They continued together in second year. 
And they went out and started all these new groups. Uh, they were all men at that time. Well, the ladies found out they wanted them. So they branched out and they had women's groups, men's groups, and they have mixed groups. And of a church of 2,000 people now, over 200 people have gone through a three-year seminary level program. And Eugene, the pastor, just says, I could die right now and it wouldn't matter because the, the fabric of this church is so well grounded in scripture because we have 200 people that are fully trained and ready and serving and ready to serve. Yeah. So I think that's the best way to do it. And we, we hear stories from around the world of people doing this, listening on their own, processing it in community, getting a, 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 a what's the word we use, a, an education that doesn't have holes in it. It's a, mm -hmm. it's a, it's a, there's a word we use, it used to be on the website, uh, comprehensive, that's the word we use, and you get a comprehensive education. You know, I mean, if you're on your own and you have to use it, that's great. But there's nothing, like, there's a reason that Jesus had 12 and not mm -hmm. one disciple. Yeah. Um, people learn in community. And I, I can think that this verse means this, and I can be in a small group, and someone says, I don't know where you got that idea, Bill. It's, it's this. I went, oh, that's right. Or an application. How do, what, what does this teach you about an application? Is not just like, okay, what am I going to do? Application is what does this teach you about God, yourself, and others? That's application. And it always starts, okay, what did you learn about God? Mm -hmm. And then, and so that that's why you need the group dynamic to ask those questions. I mean, I was teaching a Sunday school class once, and we did um, John the Baptist's beginning of Mark. And I got to the questions, okay, so what does this teach you about God? And someone in Sunday school said, he's really into community, isn't he? Mm -hmm. He he could have announced Jesus. He didn't need John to do it. But Jesus loves to work through his creation. God loves to work, same thing, but uh, <laughs> God loves to work through creation. Um, you know, there are guardian angels. He doesn't need them. But they're forever before our Father's face interceding for us, along with Jesus. So and that, that when you have that discipline of saying, what do you learn about God, yourself, and others? And you're in a community situation when you're doing it. That's when really good stuff happens. So mm -hmm. that's my main recommendation on how to use it. So are there like like study guides or notes to fill in, or is it just auditory and then you just like write down what you think and discuss what you? Well, remember? there's a lot. I'm so I'm sorry, uh, Lydia. There's there's a lot of video now. We we started in audio because I couldn't afford video, mm -hmm. um, but for the last uh, five or six years, every class we've done is video. And uh, Charles uh, basically said, we need student guides for all our main classes. So we probably have 20. Okay. And you can, down you can download them for free. Um, or if you want to buy them printed, it's through Amazon for 12 or 15 bucks, something. Uh, but it's the, it's the outline of the lecture. And what Charles was concerned about is that you're out driving and you, you hear a good point and, you f and you f you're trying to remember it, but you forget it. When you get home, you can open the student guide and you can find that outline. And there's one sentence summary of what's taught in that part of the outline. I went, oh, that's right. That's, that's, that's what I had a question about. Mm -hmm. So we have, uh, uh, we try to do, um, I mean, again, this stuff all costs money, uh, but we try to do this for all of our core classes. And we've got, I don't know, maybe, maybe we're closer to 25 right now. That's great. Yep. Yep. Awesome. Yeah. Well, Thank you for this. And thanks for the website. Sure. Uh, it's been very personally impactful in both of our lives. And especially, uh, you know, after high school, I went through a really dark time in my own faith and going through many of the courses in biblical training helped give me a better perspective of the world and God and, and so on. So, yeah. yeah. Oh, good. I'm glad. I'm glad. Big reason thanks. I'm now off in the seminary uh, mm -hmm. academic direction so yeah 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 oh great that's good to know i'll share that with the board they love stories like that <laughs> well it seems like god is blessing his own idea so through you yeah. so thank you for all your yeah. work and your generosity Just through it. Do it doing what i'm told to do <laughs> <laughs> i mean that that's just i was told to do it and when god tells you to do something you do it and you just just 
you know, it's just real, it's real simple. You just do it. Um, so, well, thank you. We hope you enjoyed this episode of The Bible Toolbox. All of the resources mentioned in this episode are posted on our website, thebibletoolbox.com. There you can also find out more information on how to give and support us. And we have loved all of the encouragement and feedback we've received from you. So thanks so much.